Network's coverage of Major League Baseball brings us to the Sunshine State and Marlins Park in Miami. Today, the third and final game in this three-game series between the New York Mets and the Miami Marlins. The Marlins look for the series sweep at home against their division rivals. First pitch is next. Chris Sale starts the game on the mound for the third and final game of the series. Dan, any thoughts? Wow, talk about a number that jumps out at you. This guy's whip, which is walks to hits to innings pitch, is less than one coming into this start. That's not an easy thing to do. That tells me one thing. Not only is his stuff good, but he wipes people out quick. This is a real good pitcher. Stepping up now, Ahmed Rosario. He will lead this one off today. First offering on its way. And we are underway this afternoon from Miami as the first pitch is taken for ball one. These Marlins as they take the field this afternoon they have got to be considered the hottest team in baseball right now as they come in winners of nine of their last ten ball games. What an opportunity to get a chance to put our eyeballs on one of the best teams in baseball right now. This team has played so well. Their manager has been on point. Every move he makes is working. Timely hitting. Great defense. Good bullpen. The starters have been on point. This is going to be special. Two balls and a strike to Ahmed Rosario. Now the 2 1. And now look out as Ed runs in and gets him. And a very interesting start to this one. Well, there's no strategic reason to hit the leadoff man that I can think of. So now he's aboard with no outs to start the game. And that's not how you want to get your outing underway on the mound. In is the third baseman Evan Longoria lifetime against Chris Sale. He has an even 10 hits in 45 at bats. He's also gone down on strike 17 times. He's ready. Here's the first offering on the ground to second base. This could be two. Oh got him and that's a gorgeous play. And now a chance to meet the Mets. Anybody catch your eye Dan. You know, Matt, I'm looking for Longoria to snap out of the funk he's been in. Well, he's really struggled in this recent stretch. You look at it, he has only one RBI in the last 10 games, and he's hitting in the middle of the order. They're expecting a lot more production from him, and I'm sure he's expecting a lot more from himself. Outfielder Steven Piscotti the next to hit. He did not play last night, but clearly back in the starting nine for this one. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch takes this the other way to right but he'll barely have to move out there and right as he hauls this one in for the second out. Center fielder number nine. Now at the plate Brandon Nimmo he's off to a good start at the plate the average coming in just under 300. Ready with the first pitch here it comes and this one gets away. And he's going to make it up to third here as he advances on the wild pitch. That can be a tough read as a runner on second to see if the ball has gotten away enough to move to third. You have to be sure you can make it. He was there, and now he's only 90 feet away. Rosario at third with two away. Drilled down the line, but a foul ball, one and one. Swing and a miss just out in front of that fastball. Got him swinging and that will end the inning. Mets strand one. It's the Mets nothing. Marlins coming up. You're watching MLB Network. Noah Syndergaard gets the ball in game three of the series. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, when you think of the power arms in baseball, this is the first guy you think of. Noah Syndergaard, big, strong guy, throws 89 to 93 mile an hour sliders. That's right, sliders. His fastball, anywhere from 97 to 101 miles an hour. Power fastball, power slider, and a terrific changeup. One of the best pitchers in the game of baseball. First pitch of the at-bat. 
ground ball sent back up the middle. Rosario's got it, and the inning begins with a quick out number one. Time now for a glance at the Marlins lineup card in this one. Who do you have your eye on, Dan? Hey, well, Matt, I'm going to be paying close attention to Starling Marte. This guy stole over 40 bases last year, Matt. Over 40. That's a big number, especially in today's game when guys don't run a whole lot. Now in the box, Chris Taylor. He's got hits in each of the last five ball games. First delivery to him on the way. Line to the right side. A dive, but he can't come up with it in right as it skips right past him. He hit the corner and tries for third. The relay, and he is in there. And that's the chance you take when you lay out for a ball like that. You make the play and you're a hero on the highlight shows. You miss it and you're picking yourself up and chasing after it. In is Jorge Soler, looking to stay hot. He's been a real threat at the plate the last week or so. First pitch coming, here it is. Slider right over the middle, taken for a strike. These Mets fellas as they take the field here today they dropped another one last time out and in fact they've won just twice in their last eight tries. Yeah Matt things haven't gone too well so far in this series d -Row. they're looking to avoid the sweep here in this one. Yeah get, they got to get off in the early innings it's it's going to be monumental if they can push a few runs across and give this pitcher a chance to relax. Oh and two here it is. Now a ball pulled hard but fouled off to the left. The next 0 2. He's offered at and missed. He chased it for strike three. Man, they've really had his number so far in this series. That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. Standing in now, Franz Reyes, as he'll swing and hit this one hard, but fouled off to the left and out of play. Runner in scoring position with Sugan. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and a check swing here as he couldn't help himself, and it's ruled strike two. Reyes. Brings a ton of pop to the plate with him, particularly against right-handed pitching. Some guys don't drive the ball as well when facing a pitcher who throws from the same side that they swing the bat, but that's certainly not the case here. Yeah, this guy just absolutely hammers right-handed pitching. You know, some guys like the ball in, coming towards them, and that's exactly what the righty-on-righty -righty matchup presents itself. A two-seamer in, a four-seamer that leaks out over the plate, a hanging breaking ball. This guy seems to absolutely hammer those. Hit hard on the ground is short. Rosario's got it cleanly. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Marlins leave one. We are still scoreless. Here's Matt Carpenter. He'll get us started in the top of the second. Second baseman, Matt Carpenter. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. And the 34 year old veteran looks at a called strike. It's 0 and 1. Well, as we talked about at the top of the broadcast, the fish have their sights set on a series sweep here today. This team going for the sweep is looking for some home cooking. It's always nice to win a series, but particularly nice when you can sweep a series at home. And it certainly helps when you're throwing your ace on the mound in the series finale. Can't ask for much more than that. One of the keys when you show up to the ballpark and you're going for a sweep, you look at that lineup card, you see your ace pitcher is on the mound. You have to feel awfully good about your chances to complete the sweep. Swing and a miss on the slider, and that's out number one. 
Check out the Miami Marlins on defense. And let's take a look at Starling Marte, another one of those super athletic outfielders of the new regime. Ability to cover ground, can play multiple positions in the outfield, hit in the middle of the order. Here's Yuenna Cespedes, and he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. A changeup that catches the corner for strike one. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. Hey, you could tell his eyes lit up on that ball right there. It was a little up, but it was out over the plate. Tough pitch to pull, and this guy's known for going deep pull side. Ready with the 0-2. Fastball, strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Two up, two down on strikes in this inning. He looks really sharp out there, guys. Here's the catcher, Wilson Ramos. Lifetime against Chris Sale. He's got five base hits in 24 at-bats. He's also hit a couple of home runs against him. The wind-up and the 0-1 in front of the changeup and he can't keep it fair two strikes on him now and a slider called strike three as he couldn't pull the trigger and the side is retired three up three down three strikeouts not too shabby don't touch that remote more on MLB Network digging in Garrett Cooper, early season average, pushing up near 350, so he's definitely been a bright spot for his ball club. And the pitch. Fouled off. The 0 1 pitch. Another one fouled off, and he's quickly behind 0-2. Cindergaard, or Thor, as he's often known. He was a first-round pick back in the 2010 first-year player draft. Yeah, Matt, you cannot miss on your first-rounder, and they didn't with this guy. He has turned himself into an absolute superstar. And a good bite to that slider as he swings through it for the first out of the inning. Okay, here's how the Mets are lining up defensively. And guys, we need to seriously focus on the defense behind the dish today. This guy brings gold to the party, the ability to block balls, keep everything in front of him, shut down a running game, and massage his pitcher through nine innings. Stepping into the box, Ari Perez. He'll get to take his first cuts here. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Line drive to left. But pretty much right at the left fielder as he takes it in for the second out. He got that one pretty good. It just didn't have the right launch angle to carry over the outfielder's head. Small difference where the ball hit the bat could have made all the difference. In now, Julian Gonzalez. Nope. And he'll hold off on the slider here to start the at bat. It's ball one. The numbers coming in. He's at 255. Four home runs, 10 RBIs. Now the 1 0. Popped up. Rosario is there. Makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. One, two, three, go the Marlins. We'll move to the third with no score. A great shot there of the Blue Waters in long sandy stretches of Miami Beach. Back now for the top of the third inning on MLB Network. Here's Todd Frazier now. He starts off the inning against a guy who struck out the side last inning. How did they get to him here? I'm not sure, Matt, that they want to stay as patient. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. They might want to start swinging a little bit earlier in the count. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Comes right after him with a fastball for a strike. Behind 0 and 2 now.
swing and a miss. Five straight strikeouts now, and there's one gone. Man, he is looking flat out unhittable on the mound right now. That's five straight punch outs. I love it, but I think he might want to get his defense involved at some point so they don't fall asleep. Stepping in now, Noah Syndergaard. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. Mets are still looking for their first hit of the ball game. Fly ball right down the line and left. After it is Soler. And this will fall, but it's a foul ball. Mets pitcher behind at the plate with a ball and two strikes. We're seeing him in an absolute groove out there in the mound right now. Retired seven straight, and mechanically, he looks really consistent and fluid to me. And that's high for a ball. It's two and two. Outside and a full count, three and two. Well, he really needs to make this guy swing the bat right here. He's not the type of hitter you want to dance around with. This is in the air out to right. Reyes moves over. He's got it, and there are two down now. The batter, number one, Gordon Ahmed Rosario. And that will bring in the former top prospect, Ahmed Rosario. Two away in the inning, and Dan, it looks like this could be another one, two, three inning form. Yeah, he has really found a groove on the mound, and it's been impressive to watch. It'll be interesting to see how long he can keep this dominance up. going to be trouble. Legs churning. He's headed for second. And he is in the second with a two-out double. Yeah, this one was starting to look like it was going to be one of those one, two, three easy innings. But now all of a sudden, they have the go-ahead run standing out there at second base after the two-out double. Big moment here. Into the box, Evan Longoria fouled away. Longoria or just Longo as he's often referred. He was selected in the first round or in the first year player draft of 2006. Yeah, he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on a superstar level, but you know what? They didn't miss with this pick either. You don't. There's a swing and he sends a ball high in the air into left field. And oh, trouble averted as he takes away extra bases and the inning is over. Definitely worth another look as he scales the wall to take away a home run. More baseball on MLB Network right after this. In now, Christian Optimus, and he'll get his first opportunity in this one. First offering on its way. That's lifted the other way out to left. Cespedes is there. And that's the first out of the inning. So one gone now as we give you a look at where these two teams find themselves entering play in the National League's Eastern Division race. Digging in, Chris Sale. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. That's yanked into the stand. Strike one. Bottom of inning number three. Nothing, nothing our score. Popped up. Longoria over to his left. And he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Center fielder number six. Darling. Hey! Here's Starling Marte. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Here comes the first pitch. Just got a piece up the line. Foul ball, however, strike one. This is flared out towards second. And that's in there. So perhaps some life here with two men out. So some two-out success, and the bottom of the third frame will continue. 
Boy, this is just a case of another really good hitter finding a way, even though that was a soft liner, finding a way to get hits. Yeah, he usually hits rockets and catches the barrel, but even his soft liners fall. Dan, he has a knack for keeping his bat in his zone and giving himself a chance much longer than the average ball player. Chris Taylor is in with two away now as he looks at a called strike one. Now the 0-1, a pitch out, the throw, and they'll nail him at second on a brilliant call to pitch out, and the inning is over. Another look at the throw down that results in a third out on the bases. Three innings in the books, no score on MLB Network. Ready for another chance? Steven Piscotti, and he'll step in to start things out against Chris Sale. This game is rolling right along as we move into the middle innings with no score. You'd think by now one of these two teams would be able to get some base runners on and get him in, but that hasn't been the case. Ah, but that finds the first baseman's glove, and that's a tough first down. the former first round draft choice Brandon Nimmo as Sale will get the upper hand to start the at bat here at strike one he was a strikeout victim in his first try into the windup here comes the 0 and 1 high and deep down the left field line and that will end up a foul ball Now a shot to center field. Back goes the center fielder, but this ball has plenty behind it, and it's a home run. So it's a solo shot to dead center. Seven home runs for him on the year now, and the Mets are on the board first, one to nothing. I'm sure you know it's coming after that bomb. That's right. Let's check it out on show track. And as the numbers come in, we see it was projected at over 450 feet. An incredible home run to watch. The batter number 13. Into the box now, Matt Carpenter. Matt as he will take a fastball in there at the knees for strike one. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Oh and two count. Here's the pitch. And a fastball just a bit high. Okay, so now is where I think you pull the string. Throw the El Cambio up there. Hasn't seen it yet, and I think he's set up for it right here. So it was a swinging strike three. Matt Carpenter sent packing for the second out of the inning. Another strikeout for him on the mound, and boy, is it fun to watch him go about his business. Ah, no doubt, Matty. He's one of my favorites, mostly because of his stuff. You know, he can absolutely dominate on any given day because of what he offers up there. It's just nasty. There aren't many hitters that like to see this guy on the mound. He's 0 for 1 thus far. The wind up and the 0 1. And that one just missed outside. Line drive to center field. That's his first base hit, making one for two now. So that'll extend the inning and bring Wilson Ramos to the plate with two away. Everybody's different coming out of spring training. Some guys get off to torrid starts, some guys struggle. This is one that struggled, but maybe that single gets him going. Here's the catcher, Wilson Ramos. As he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. First time up, he went down looking. And now a fastball for a called strike. It's one and one. Cespedes, the runner at first, with two gone. Hit hard on the ground at first. Scooped up on the backhand. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Mets draw first blood thanks to this solo home run. Bottom of the
of the fourth coming up. It's one nothing match. Leading off the inning, Chris Taylor. And they'll need him Leading to get something going here. Chris Taylor. Here's the first pitch to him. Now a swing and a miss as they start him out on a pitch well inside for strike one. Hey, he's rolling so far in this one as we head in to the middle part of this game. How about 90% of his first pitches have been for strikes. If he continues to do that, he just might finish this one. Piscotti moves to his right and puts this one away in the alley for out number one. Left fielder, Jorge Soler. In is Jorge Soler, the reigning batting champion in the American League. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Well, he had to be looking for something else to start the at-bat. It's 0-1. In his career, Soler hits a little over the 270 mark. This is line to left. And he will make the play out there, and there are two away now. Right fielder, number 32, Franz Reyes. Stepping in, Franz Reyes. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Here we go. And there's a base hit on the line. So we'll go a little deeper into the bottom of the fourth as that extends the inning. Boy, after that base knock right there, D-Roll, he extends his hitting streak to seven games. Yeah, and you can tell he's made some necessary adjustments at the plate. Anytime you're getting a knock every day of the week, you're doing things right. Keeping that front shoulder tough, staying inside the ball, not trying to do too much. First pitch of the at-bat. High in the air out to center field. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. One left for Miami. They still trail 1-0. Here's Todd Frazier now. He's in to get things going here in inning number five. First pitch coming. Here it is. Fastball and he swings through it to fall behind. A wave and a miss, a tick behind a good fastball. Frazier swings a bat and throws from the right side and stands at six foot three. This is the final year of his current deal, so he'll be a free agent at season's end. You know, Matty, I know he's in the final year of his contract, but he's playing to expectations, to be honest with you. I know he, need, he wants to turn it up a little bit, though, as he approaches the end of the season and make that salary push as he heads towards free agency again. Standing in now, Noah Syndergaard. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. You know, from an offensive standpoint, they already knew they had their work cut out for him against a great pitcher. But if he's going to locate like that, this is going to be a tough day. Now the 1 and 1 pitch. Is swung on and missed for strike number two. Both clubs with three hits in the ball game. Pulls this one into the air out into right field. Reyes coasts under it. He hauls it in without any trouble, and there are two away. So coming to the plate, Ahmed Rosario. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Hit hard towards center. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. So a line drive single to center makes it two hits for him this afternoon. And as we check out the rankings on this Mets ball club, you can see there he's currently leading the team in that department. Digging in now, Evan Longoria. 
And if you remember, he was robbed of a home run earlier after an outstanding effort in the outfield. Oh, and he gets a fastball up in the zone, and he hammers it out to deep left field. And this baby is gone. A home run. A two-run home run for Evan Longoria, number 296 in his career. And the Mets have taken a 3 to nothing lead. Well, his first home run of the season is a memorable one. As we take a look at it here, you can see that it was 50-50 if it was going to stay fair. But somehow, he wills it just enough until, clank, it hits off the foul pole for a homer. Outfielder Steven Piscotti the next to hit. 1-0 and oh the count. The 1-0. -oh. That one's going to find the seats. Strike one. Three runs, five hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. It's one and two. And he struck him out, his eighth punch out of the ball game, and that one ends the inning. But the Mets do strike for two, both coming on this two-run home run. Middle of the afternoon here in Miami. It's 3-0 New York. So digging in now, Ari Perez. He leads off in the bottom of the fifth Leading as they look the to bottom. break through on the scoreboard for the first time in this one. Yeah, baseball is a game of adjustments, and it's time they start making some. They don't need to change their entire approach necessarily, but now is maybe when they start thinking about ways to get the guy in the mound out of his rhythm a bit. And there's one away. So another exceptional effort for him on the mound. He's got the shutout working here, as we'll show you the league ERA leaders. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. Digging in for his second at bat, Julian Gonzalez. First pitch of the at bat. Broken bat as this ball's hit on the ground. Throw on the first, takes care of him. Two very quick outs to start the home fifth. Oh, that'll make you smile as a pitcher. You make a good pitch, you, you blow the guy's bat up, and then you make the play yourself. In your head, you're thinking, nice swing, meat. Stepping in now. Christian Optimus. Looked like he went around that time. They'll appeal down to third, and yes, sir, it's strike one. Bases are empty here with two men out. Ah, and he pulled the string a bit too sharply there on a curveball as it's down around the shoe tops. Wow, kind of an interesting pitch call there. The batter flailed at the pitch away on the previous one, so you'd think you would think. Oh, he jumps on this one. It's high and deep to center. And goodbye. This one ain't coming back. Solo shot to right center. Home run number five on the year. And the Marlins strike for a run. It's now a three to one ball game. Well, they're still down, but this homer right there might light a fire under the whole team. Give them a spark to climb back into this thing. We'll see if this gets them going. Into the box, Chris Sale. And see a good look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. This is what fires me up right here. You don't get a chance to see this every day of the week. You got the reigning Cy Young Award winner squaring off against the reigning MVP. That's why you pay the price of admission. Takes a knee-high fastball. Liner toward right center. But he will run this one down in right center. A tough L9 and the inning is over.
Marlins get one back thanks to the solo home run. Five innings complete. It's the Mets three and the Marlins one. And here's the former first round draft choice Brandon Nimmo comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. A fastball right down the middle for a strike. Wind up and the 0 1. Missed with a slider. A swing and a miss just out in front of that fastball. And he wasn't going to hit that one with an or. The strikeout, and there's one gone. Really good late fight on that slider right there. The best ones have that late action that just starts at the last minute. They're so tough to get the bat on, and when you've got that good slider going, it's a great strikeout pitch. Here's Matt Carpenter. I think he's forgotten about sometimes Matt Carpenter. When we talk about best hitters in our sport, I think he's one of the more underrated offensive players. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Tries to shave the corner with that pitch, but it's one and one. No contact there, and it's one and two. Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. That's ten strikeouts for him now, and I'll tell you, he could rack up quite a few more before he's done. Still a lot of game left in this one. Here's the left fielder, Ioannis Cespedes. He's ready. Here's the first offering. You know, Matt, and every team has that one guy, and Ioannis Cespedes is that guy for the Mets. Completely changes that complexion of that Mets betting order. That's inside. 2 0. Hey. Two balls and a strike. That's a nasty pitch right there. You got to tip your hat as the hitter. You get a nasty slider like that, there's nothing you can do. Actually, a quality take. Here's a big swing and a miss on the fastball. Two and two. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Popped him up. Perez is under it. And he brings it in on the warning track. Down in order go the Mets. As the lead remains 3-1. Here's Starling Marte, one for two on his line so far in the game. Things not looking very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. You know, guys, sometimes guys don't like pulling the trigger 0-0. They want to see something go by, calibrate the speed, calibrate the break, and then make their adjustments off that. Maybe that's the case right here. Here's a shot to left field and deep. Out of here, into the Fiddler's bullpen. It's a solo shot for Starling Marte. Seven home runs for him on the year now. And with it, the Marlins have cut it to 3-2 to two now. That one definitely seems worth taking a look at with show track. It wasn't a particularly deep home run, but as you can see, he connected pretty well. 110 miles an hour off the bat, and it got out of here in a hurry. The batter number three. And now, Chris Taylor. Taylor. As he'll send a ground ball down to third. 
on the first. So a good bounce back pitch there as he gets the ground ball for the first out. Left fielder, Jorge Soler. Now at the plate, Jorge Soler. One run in and one gone so far at the inning. First pitch coming, here it is. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. He threw first and hustling for second. And he'll pull into second with one away. Hey, after that base knock right there, he's into double digits, Dero. That's a 10-game hitting streak. Oh, you talking about double digits, Dan. Now it's getting firm. We're seeing the batting average go up. We're seeing the homers go up. We're seeing the RBIs go up. Everything is moving north. Into the box now, Franz Reyes. As he'll fall behind here as he goes after a fastball that might have been out of the zone at strike one. Soler, the runner at second with one away. Now a look and a throw back to second. Back in standing. A one count. Here's the pitch. Line drive base hit. Long throw to the plate. But this won't be in time as he's well safe and the run scores. Hey, they weren't going to keep this guy down for long. That's the ebbs and flows of the baseball season. Bottom line is this guy has bat to ball skills. You knew he was going to get hot eventually. Stepping in now, Garrett Cooper as the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. As a look, now the pitch. Oh, and this at bat is quickly moving from bad to worse. It's 0 and 2 now. After that off balance swing right there, you find yourself down 0 2 and wishing you were back on deck with the donut on your bat, visualizing hitting a home run. From the stretch. Down the third baseline. But a foul ball, and the count holds it 0 2. A bullet to first base. Quick step to the bag is not in time for the double play. The catcher, number 14. Riding in, Ari Perez. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ball game. From the stretch, swing and a little tapper that rolls foul for strike one. Runner on first, two away, all tied at three apiece. This is on the ground over the first. And there's his first base hit in this one. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Boy, there's another opposite base hit right there, Dero. It's he's turning up April showers into May powers right now. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. This guy has gotten off to a hot start. But it's his ability to use the whole field. That's what's made the difference. He's not just pull happy or trying to push everything the other way. He's taking it. And we'll have to leave it there as the play is made here to end the inning. Who says first base is where they hide the guys that can't play the field? On to the back third here this afternoon, and we'll have it for you next on MLB Network. Welcome back to South Florida. Tight one on our hands. All tied at three apiece as we look at the game summary through six innings of play. Digging in, Wilson Ramos. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Wilson Ramos. First offering on its way. Smoke toward third. He lays out for it, but he can't pull it in. First baseman, number 21. 
Todd Frazier. Coming to the plate now, Todd Frazier, 0 for 2 here to start the afternoon. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Swing by Frazier, and this one sends soaring to left field. And as Mets fans have heard before, that ball's out of here. A two run homer that time for Todd Frazier. His first home run of the season, and it's now 5 to 3. How about the work the lineups have been doing so far, fellas? Matty V, this is turning into Home Run Derby Part 2. d -row, five bombs already in this one. Yeah, there's a fight at the bat rack for both teams right here. A lot of missed locations right out over the heart of the plate, and neither side is missing. Noah Syndergaard is in for the third time now as he takes a called strike. It's 0-1. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Late swing at a slider for a strike. Five runs, seven hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. And he misses there, one and two. When he's pitching effectively, usually that two-seam fastball is moving quite a bit, but here it's just kind of flat and straight. Could be a big part of the reason why he's getting knocked around. Made a miss on the off-speed pitch that time. Noah Syndergaard becomes the first out of the inning. It's never easy to rebound after serving up a two-run shot, but that at bat was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to him. He went right after him for the strikeout. First pitch of the at-bat. And it's fouled away. Bases are empty, one man out. Strike two. And certainly no offer at that one. It's one and two. Not a bad pitch right there on 0 and 2 a fastball and I think as a hitter right now you have to continue to go up there looking to hit off the fastball. Marte comes on now and makes the catch in shallow center for round number two. Now batting third baseman Evan Longoria. Evan Longoria will stand in again as we flash you back to the middle innings here. This was a big blow, a two-run home run that really got his guys going. First pitch on its way. A slider that he looks at over the outside corner. Two out, nobody on. Nope. And a classic 0-2 pitch as the changeup misses low, and it's one and two now. Well, that's a smart miss there. Sometimes guys will chase it down there, especially when they're in protect mode on an 0-2 count. The one-two. Count still at one and two. Another 1-2 delivery. And he's got another one here. 12 punch outs now in the ball game, and that'll end the inning. A two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run home run. Bottom of the seventh inning coming up. Get up and stretch. 5-3 New York. Leading off the inning, Christian Optimus as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast. They could certainly use that right now. Strike one to start the at-bat. Here's the pitch. 
drilled on the ground is short. Oh, what a stop on the slide. Hey, now. A pitcher number 41, Ritter. Rudy Tunis will move into the on-deck circle now to try to get something started here with one gone in the inning. A shot down the first baseline. And he'll step on first himself for the out. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Starling Marte. He's two for three and looking for more here. First pitch on its way. And this pitch just about saws him off as he can't get extended at all. It's strike one. Boys, we see the pitch count. It's hard to remember the last time we saw a guy pitch this efficiently. Yeah, Matt, it's incredible to watch him go after guys. He's forcing a lot of early contact, and they haven't done a whole lot with the balls they put in play against him. Yeah, that hard hit single right there. That's oh, clean. Three for four. He's looking locked. Rick Taylor. Standing in now. Taylor, a pitch out, the throw, and they'll nail him at second on a brilliant call to pitch out, and the inning is over. Nothing doing for the Marlins. Still a two-run deficit. It's 5-3. to three. Trevor Rogers has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Trevor Outfielder Steven Piscotti the next to hit. He went down on strikes last time up. Hitting off with a man. Popped him up. Cooper ranging into shallow right. He's there and records the first down. So now it'll be the four hole hitter, Brandon Nimmo. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. And a high strike there, 0 and 1. The Fish entered the day looking to wrap up a big series sweep, but it's going to take some late game heroics in order to make that a reality. Never easy to sweep any team, but this is a close one, and there's an old saying in baseball, a bloop and a blast, and if they can stay close, get a base hit, get somebody to hit one out of the ballpark, they're not out of this one yet. One out, nobody on. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. That's the third time in this game he's gone down on strikes. Not the game he was hoping to have when he was taking batting practice, but at least his guys are ahead. Here's Matt Carpenter. Lays off 1-0. As we near the end of this one, it's clear the long ball has played a big role in today's outcome. Dan, d -Row, what are your final thoughts on what we've seen? Yeah, just non-competitive pitches in some big situations, Dan, and the offense took full advantage. Yeah, you know, d -Row, one of the things about pitching is you want to have location, and it was obvious in this one today that the pitchers weren't on point, and what happens when that happens? Hitters make you pay, and the long ball was a big part of this one here. Sometimes it can be difficult for a pitcher. You're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup. Sometimes the toughest thing is to be aggressive and throw strikes. Two and two. Don't kid yourself. He's well aware that he has the hat trick right now. And after that swinging strike, he's looking at the golden sombrero. Here now the two two. Is in there. A called strike three. Mets go down one, two, three, and it remains five to three. Anthony Swarzak is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Anthony Swarzak.
stepping in and ready for another shot. Chris Taylor is working on a one for three thus far. Chris Taylor. First delivery to him on the way. And there's a pitch that just misses the inside corner. Here comes the 1-0. Here we go. And he's in front of a tight little slider that time. A 1-1. Line shot to first, and there's one away. Up next for the Marlins. Left fielder, Jorge Soler. In is Jorge Soler. He hit a two-bagger and later scored in his previous plate appearance. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Hit on the ground to third. Uh, this is foul for the first strike. On its way, the 0-1 pitch. And a whiff at a good slider that time. Bases are empty. One man out. Swing and a miss at one in the dirt. And the throw is made to record the second out of the inning. Right Settling in now, Franz Reyes. They're quickly down to their final four outs here tonight. Outfield in the no doubles defense. Now the first pitch. There's a drive high in the air and deep to left center field. Cespedes is going back. Still going back. Solo shot here to left as they pull within one here. It's now a 5-4 game. As he will line this one into right center, and this is going to get down and should be extra bases. Running hard, he's digging for second. And hold all tickets now as the time run gets into scoring position with a two out double. This is the type of production they were expecting for this guy when he came to the majors a couple of years back. He looks really at ease at the plate, and that relaxed swing is getting some really good results. Good example on that double there. Always great to see a young player blossom. So stepping in, Ari Perez, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Well, some would say no harm done with that wild pitch, right? But I disagree. The runner's now 90 feet away from scoring an infield single, a booted ball, and he crosses the plate. That might not be the case if he were still on second. Cooper on third with two out. Check swing, no swing, says the home plate umpire. Ball two. Trying to hold the lead, here's the delivery. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Waiting on it is Nimmo. He's got it to end the inning as they'll strand the tying run in scoring position. Marlins able to draw just a bit closer thanks to the solo home run. On to the ninth inning from Miami. It's down to one at 5-4 now. Miguel Delgaiso enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. 
at the plate. Yoannis Cespedes. He'll try and lead things off here in inning number nine. Ninth inning begins as the first pitch is taken for ball one. Count even now at one and one. When that thing goes whistling into the stands, you hope someone brought their glove and is able to get leather on it. And he'll come back with one in the dirt as the count moves to two and one now. And he jumps at a changeup, a swing and a miss. The 2-2. Two -two. To the left side, but it's well foul. Another try at 2-2. Two -two. Tough curveball that time, but he's able to make a little contact to keep this at bat going. Ready with another 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there for the first down here in the ninth. Boy, there's nothing better from a pitcher's standpoint than watching that high fastball. A high piece of cheese swung at and missed. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. Here's the catcher, Wilson Ramos. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. Mine to the right side. Now a dive in right, but he can't haul it in, and now this is going to be big trouble out there. And he'll reach second now with one away. Well, you can't fold a fielder for being aggressive. He sold out to try to catch this thing, but he comes up empty, and the ball just squirts by him. High risk, high reward move that just didn't pay off. Here's Todd Frazier now. We all know this guy's a real good fastball hitter. We saw how far he could hit one. He got a fastball that he liked, and he turned that thing around, and it got out of here in a hurry. And that one stayed too low, apparently. He's going to have to have a talk with the umpire after this half inning, because if he's not going to get those calls, he's got to come a little bit more over the heart of the plate, and that usually means damage done. The 2 0. Swing and a ball hit foul as this will find the seats in right. One out and a runner on second base. Took a good cut that time, but comes up empty 2 and 2. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. He's set. Here's the 2 2. And he fouls this one off. And he goes down on strikes for the third time. Peter Alfonso will look to provide a little two-out thunder off the bench as he'll hit with a runner at second and two away. That's a ball. The fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. A ball and a strike to the Mets first baseman. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. In the dirt, and now let's see. The tag's there, and he's out trying to steal third. Great throw. Nothing doing for the Metropolitans. They lead it 5-4. to four. Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Right, Seth Lugo, if the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the night. Number 67. Striding in to start the ninth, Julian Gonzalez, and they'll need him to get something going here.
First pitch of the at bat. Hit sharply on the ground. Rosario brings it in. And a bit of a high throw that time, but no problem over there at first as they record the out. So striding forward now, Christian Optimus. As the switch hitter will take his cuts left-handed here. One of the things this guy would like to do from the left side is swing it a little bit better against right-handed pitching. This guy has decent numbers, but not great numbers against right-handed pitchers. Well executed two-seamer on the outside corner that time, and, and that's what you'll get a lot of with that pitch. He rolled right over it. Ryan Zimmerman will pinch hit here, and he's the potential tying run. Ryan Zimmerman. First pitch hack in here, and that's the first strike. Fans on their feet in a one run ball game in the last of the ninth. Slapped hard the opposite way. But this is taken in as a perfect metaphor to end this one as that ball was hit hard, but the ball game is over. Wow, you don't see a closer finish better than that very often. Only needed four pitches to slam the door in the face and solve this game away for his guys. A one-run finish today, 5-4 to four the final score. New York jumped ahead in the seventh inning and never gave the lead back. Noah Syndergaard notches his third win of the year. Chris Sale racked up 12 strikeouts but still ends up taking the loss. Seth Lugo earns the save out of the bullpen his fourth of the season. So that'll just about do it. For my partners Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak, this is Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching a presentation of MLB Network. So long, everybody. The final line storm for this afternoon's ballgame for the victorious New York Mets. Five runs. Eight hits, no errors. They left four men on base. For the Marlins, four runs on 11 hits, no errors. They left seven men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 13 minutes. A reminder that Marlins shuttle buses are available outside Marlins Park with service to the Culmer Metro Rail Station.